Hey everyone, Nicholas from Dead by Dice here. In this video, we are going to take a look at host providers for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. We are taking a look at three um, mentionable providers that are um, providing a um, hosting for a monthly pay. So um, the focus in this video will be from a pricing point. What do you get for the dollars you pay for that service? And uh, after the video with these three, I'm going to give you my opinion on what might be the best service, if there is any. I can also say that I am not affiliated with any of these. I'm not even using a paid um, hosting provider. I'm hosting my own in a free Oracle Cloud installation but you have to make all the maintenance yourself and update everything and keep track of what's going on because otherwise it might break. These providers will provide you all that service and the only thing you need to do is to log in and use Foundry. So without further ado, let's take a look at the hosting services. The first one out here is uh, foundryserver.com. They claim to be the first uh, one of the first, at least, uh, services that provided hosting for a Foundry virtual tabletop. Let's check out the pricing. In the hosting pricing, you will see here they provide you standard and advanced um, kind of uh, tiers. And we have in standard, we have level one, two, and three. And we see here that uh, in standard level one, it costs you five bucks. Well, standard level one, you get five gigabytes of storage space. You get 40 gigabytes of bandwidth. And bandwidth is what you use when you, for example, um, play music or you stream a conference, the conference tool inside um, Foundry. And uh, that bandwidth can be eaten up pretty easily by uh, audio, especially. And of course, also video conference tools. But if you, uh, if you have audio that is web files and such, it will go quite fast. You got one gig of RAM, 50% of a one core CPU. Don't know which core, but... Uh, one core at least you got three hours of server idle shutdown which i believe is if you leave everything um in in a session it will shut down after three hours if there is no one there and, and you have five days free trial you have a monthly recovery point where you probably will have a backup every month made you have five days of free trial and a, you have the FTP upload and download support. What differs that from the standard level two is that you have 10 gigs of storage space, 50 gigs of bandwidth. You have um, the, the core, the, the CPU is the same. You have 24 seven server uptime, which means you can leave it idle or uh, logged in. I guess. And what that makes uh, is that, for example, if your players need to log in to do something, they can do that and uh, you can just leave it uh, logged in. And you see here, level three, it's uh, a little bit more. You got one entire CPU dedicated for you and your installation for the $1595 a month uh, price point. Then we have the advanced, and as I see it here, it's uh, it's only an increase of the standard levels here. There is nothing radically changed or any service that will add in to uh, this, and that's twenty four ninety five and thirty four, and the most exclusive, most expensive one is forty five ninety five dollars a month. So if you try them out, you can probably make that a five day free trial if you want to. They also have a Discord channel where you can uh, probably discuss with other users. And uh, I think support is also available there.
So check that out. That was the foundryserver.com hosting service. Let's take a look at next. Next up here, we have the forge and uh, you can find it by forge-vtt.com. And they claim to be very hassle-free and that's their selling point. And uh, what do we have here? We have more or less the same kind of hosting as the uh, former one that we checked out. Uh, and uh, we can check out the features here. Well, here we see their explanation of um, the advantages of using the Forge in comparison to a self-hosted uh, Foundry VTT. And well, yes, I recognize this is uh, usually what um, what you need to uh, go through if you're and if you're not used to it or uh, very um, familiar with it, it can be uh, quite of a hassle. Well, here on the Forge, you have um, an account and then you can install things. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the modules, for example, and systems and worlds that are uh, contained within your Foundry installation, you can find them here also. And uh, when you are logged in, you can install these into your Foundry installation from here. And it's uh, a little bit more easy than than installing it uh, from inside the admin um, area in uh, Foundry. I find this uh, very, uh, very user friendly, actually. And if we check out the plans and pricing, we have four different tiers here. We have the free forever, that's only for players. We have the game master, storyteller and the world builder. And we see that um, these are cheaper than the former one, but what do they contain? Here we can see that, for example, game data quota, you get 500 megabytes. And if we hover over here, it says only the game's database systems and modules reside in the game data area. Click for more information. So this area is for the systems and modules and, uh, some of them can might take up quite a space if it's, for example, audio um, modules, which contains audios and audio effects and sound effects. So uh, you may have to be aware of that. I don't really know. It depends. It's very individual how much you use. The asset library is what you pump into your installation for example uh, audio effects uh, we have export your games here it's uh in the first tier here for 449 uh we you can create and launch your own games and uh, no limit on number of worlds that's just the same as the foundry um inside foundry even if it's self-hosted install custom game systems and and add-on modules that's also inside and import games from a local computer yeah well there are no new features here that is not contained within the original foundry if you go for the storyteller tier for 899 dollars you get all additional the forge game manager a unique url per game with automatic world switching and that might be quite handy because then you can send out links to different players in different teams uh, for example, or different um, groups. If you play with multiple groups separately, they get each their own uh, link to, to their particular game session. And you have advanced invite management and user integration. That's also some, something I think is missing from the Foundry virtual tabletop uh, core version base system as it is for now that you cannot send proper invites in a good way at least not what i know of uh right now and then for the world builder for 12.99 a month you also get live kit server for audio and video support and i think that is um uh, some kind of conference system and uh what you also get in this uh in in the forge is free bandwidth. They say that you have free bandwidth to use uh, 
for example, for video conferencing and uh, for uh, audio streaming to all the players and so on. And that's very, and that's a very nice feature because that was not the case with the Foundry server. So that's something to uh, to observe with this uh, this service. The last service we are going to take a look at today is Molten Hosting. And on this service, we can't see much about which features you have, um, but it might be good anyway. You have to check it out. Uh, we see here you own your private server with servers worldwide. You can get up and going in under five minutes. And yeah, you can choose which area of the world you want your hosting to, to run from. And uh, there you choose something near you to get the fastest uh, uh, connection to the server. Built for Foundry, bleeding edge cloud technology. And what now that is, I'm not really sure. Uh, probably runs from Amath Amazon, I guess. Pricing plans. The basic one, $4. We have 5 gigabytes of storage. That was the same as the $5. Um, hosting uh, from uh, Forge. We have also Foundry VDT Unlimited Worlds. Well, that was also uh, the case in the base uh, installation of Foundry. FTP access, one hour idle shutdown. It's a little bit narrow, I think. Uh, that should be a little bit more. Uh, that means that it will shut down if no one is doing anything in an hour. It will automatically uh, shut down and log out. Weekly backups and email support. 10 gigabytes in the Pro, in the $8, $8 plan, where uh, the last one we checked out the Forge had $8.99. And they also had 10 gigabytes of storage in their $8.99 plan. Uh, everything is in the basic tier. Um, two hours uh, idle shutdown might also be a little bit stingy. I think that maybe they should have a 24-7 um, in this price plan. Customer support Discord. Okay, and you didn't get that from the basic plan. So they have a Discord. And then you have nightly backups every night. And in the elite $12 uh, plan, you have 20 gigs of storage, everything in the backup, in the basic and pro tier. Second server slot for testing, that might be good. And a three hour idle shutdown and on demand backups. And down here in the FAQ, it actually says that. Um, if you want your players to start the server uh, to maybe edit their sheets on something, then you can find a magic link, startup magic link, which you will start up the server. Um, the players can start up the server and probably then log in and, uh, and uh, edit their uh, sheets, their character sheets. Well, this was three service providers that provides a hosting service for Foundry. Let's summarize these three and see if we can choose one to actually be the best one. All right, here we have the Foundry server. And I think that um, this seems to be a fairly good service. And uh, starting at 495 and a five day trial is very good. Um, the difference between standard and advanced seems to be only the storage uh, that, you, that you have. And one of the main things that I am not really fond of is the bandwidth. It's very, very low. I think 40 gigabytes is uh, if you are four players and you have to stream all content to those four players. And if, or if you're, then you need to calculate all the bandwidth going to each player. The Forge, this seems like a very thoroughly worked out system where you have uh, only three different tiers, which is uh, a little less confusing than the last one. I think it can be a little bit confusing with installation of uh, modules and system uh, outside of uh, Foundry, here, up here in the Explore module system worlds, instead of having it all inside of Foundry. 
Well, you can probably do both of, if you want to. But um, I also think that the quota for assets library is kind of kind of very small, five gigabytes. It's not very much. It's kind of a little storage space, but uh, good thing is the uh, bandwidth. And with the cloud-based hosting and molten hosting, there is a little too little information about this service and what they what they offer. I understand that you can install your uh, uh, Foundry installation inside of molten hosting, and uh, but are there any more services or uh, any what what? Yeah, I, we could have a little bit more information. There is a wiki. And I see that they have built this uh, up in um, in uh, Notion, and here uh, is an explanation of how you manage the server and so on. But uh, well, it this might be good also. I, I'm not really sure. It's, uh, it's, it does not contain that much information that the others do. So, which one do I crown as the winner here in this uh, short little review? I have decided that the Forge seems to be the most complete service of these. I am not sure. I have not used any of them. My opinion is only from checking out the homepage, looking at the uh, information that you get in the page, and also in the listing out of the pricing and what you get, uh, what features you will get. I have no real experience in any of these. I do not know if they uh, work very well or not. If you have any information or experience on using any of these, please write in the comments. And what I would like to know is how they work with uh, video conferencing, for example. Usually I use um, Discord with my groups when we play, but there is a video conferencing tool inside of um, Foundry. And I find that very nice sometimes that you can have your players and your your uh, the participants, the group in, in small windows inside the, the gaming window in, in your browser. And that's, that's a really nice touch. But that will also eat up a lot of bandwidth. And uh, with a limited bandwidth that Foundry server um, provides, that might be a problem in the lower level, lower standard level one, two, and so on. This was a demonstration of three hosting providers for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. If you found it interesting or you have any comments or anything, please write it down in the comments below. Otherwise, see you next time.